guys, what's up? It's Dark Meg here and welcome back to another advanced Mythic Plus Blood DK tips and tricks video. Today we're covering off a Taldazar and this is a massive one. So I have gone with a different format for this one uh, and let me know if you like it below, but the dungeon is so big and there's uh, so many varying ways you can go. I thought we'd give it a go. Now, once again, all the info uh, in this video has been brought to you by myself, Mandel, Vera, Floorfruits, and Sinandia. Uh, so big thank you to those guys for contributing to this. Uh, the idea behind these videos, as I have said in each one, is just to help you uh, finish up your keys or your large di last, last ditch effort for IO in BFA if you're stuck just under 3K, um, just with some tricks that you may not have been uh, using or had to implement to make timers in the lower keyboard brackets that you may need to implement in the higher ones to make your timers. So to start off, we're going to talk about snap points uh, in a Taldazar if you're not familiar with these or you're not comfortable with these. So I'm going to start this off with snap help. Uh, so in regards to getting on to uh, snap points, the main ones you're going to use are in the middle of the dungeon and pretty much what you can do is you can just either run and jump or run and walk out onto them or just jump and run out onto them. The other way you can do if you fall off sometimes doing that is run, jump up onto the ledge, turn around and backpedal out. If you backpedal out, you generally won't fall off um, and you you kind of get on a lot safer by backpedaling. So again, you can just sort of jump and run out. The other way is that you can just get onto the snap point by jumping up here and then turning around and then just simply backpedaling out onto the ledge. So that's the easiest way to get out onto the snap points. Now, the actual snap points through the dungeon, there are a hell of a lot in a Taldazar. Now, one that you can do at the start, and again, this is going to depend on where you're pulling it, your group composition. You can actually body pull this first one on your mount and jump out if you wanted to just do a single snap or something like that. So you can see that I body pulled them, jumped out onto the ledge and they snap to me straight away. That's one thing you can do. Another way you can do is line up with this golden brick coming down and you can see I'm down here and I haven't aggroed a single thing. From there, I can then jump out onto the snap point. Now, if you don't have a hunter or a rogue in your group to tricks them, you can still do a double here. Now you can see this sword that I'm about to mark with a skull. What you can actually do is you can taunt that one and it will not pull the sky screamer. So if I hit taunt on this one, I can then run over and drop a DND over there and everything will snap to me. And I've now done a double snap without a rogue or a hunter. So you can still get away with some of these things uh, and I haven't pulled the Sky Screamer. Now the pack down here, I obviously can't reach from this snap point. There is another snap point though over in the garden bed over here. If this is something that you wanted to do in your group pathing as well, um, what you can actually do is you can run over and jump in this little garden bed up here and they'll snap to you. Now, again, if you don't have a hunter or a rogue, what you can do is you can either body pull them, you can run over, drop a DND on them, and then you can run and jump back up onto the garden and they'll all snap to you. So it's another convenient snap point. Uh, one of the more recent popular ones is this one up here. Now, the big advantage to this snap point up here is that on Sanguine Weeks, if you kill uh, your snaps here, all the Sanguine will drop above you, not under you, so you don't have to move. So it's a huge snap point. Now, what we've done here is we've tricked uh, an MD and we've pulled the three sword pack, so the two up on the bridge. Uh, and the uh, one down below where I just showed you to snap into the garden. So a huge advantage in, in doing these snap pulls is obviously in Mythic Plus, you want to be going quicker. If you're snapping uh, sword packs and things like that, you're reducing the amount of pulls you're doing through the dungeon. It's a far more efficient and quicker way to get through the dungeon in less pulls. Now, another one that you can do is this brazier up here. If you jump into the gap kind of between the wall and the brazier, you'll be able to get up onto the brazier. There's like an invisible wall. You can then have your rogue or hunter MD and tricks you all the trash that's out the front of uh, Priestess Alunza there, and it'll all snap to you on top of the brazier here. Again, on Sanguine Weeks, the brazier is a little bit iffy because the problem is obviously when Sanguine drops, you've got to get off the brazier and the Juggernauts, the whole idea of snapping, much the same with the swords, is it eliminates their ability to charge or jump. So when you jump down, you do have to deal with the Juggernauts charging again. Same as if you jump off a sword snap point, the swords are going to start jumping as well. This one here, you can see where the orange marker is. Now, uh, one that you can have your one of your range players go and stand where that orange marker is and I'll peel around and show you where it is in a moment. Uh, and what this will do is as the tank, you just tank them at the stop of the stairs and this will once again stop the juggernauts from uh, charging and you don't have to worry about it. You can see where Dugs is fireballing on the orange marker there. 
The other thing you can do is say if you had a shadow priest in your group, they could go and stand on that orange marker. You could tag the mobs and they could life grip you to, uh, doesn't have to be a shadow priest, sorry, they could life grip you to where that marker is and all the mobs would then snap to your location on that and everyone could just stack on you and DPS from there. So either way, the whole point is just eliminating the juggernauts charge by this with these packs uh, and it's an easily a, just a fantastic method to do here. Worth mentioning after Priestess when you come down, uh, these augers down here once interrupted, they won't bother casting again. So if you just interrupt them, you don't have to worry about them. You can just zerg them down. Another snap point here is you can run up onto this little sort of uh, lip and jump up onto this ledge. Again, uh, it's bolstering. So we have uh, sapped the Sky Screamer. If it wasn't bolstering, you'd be pulling your Screamers in with all these packs as well. But because it's bolstering, you don't want to bolster the Sky Screamers. So this is the way we're doing it. But another nice little double location here up on this ledge. And again, just cutting down on your pulls, making this a hell of a lot quicker. Just be aware if it's on Sanguine Weeks and things like that. If you do jump off, remember the swords are going to leap. So just be aware of that. Uh, so once that's done, say on a bolstering week, then you can go and pull uh, a pack from here and you can pull three Screechy. So it's still not a wasted pull in regards to you've still got three targets uh, in a pull, which, you know, if you've got hunters in the group, they're going to love. Now, this one is especially uh, specific to bolstering weeks. So I'm going to go back to the uh, one of the original snap points. And what's going to happen is the rogue is going to go over to the other side. He's going to tricks me and then he's going to go sap blind the sky screamers and he's going to tricks and double snap the swords from all the way over there. Now, the reason this is uh, specific to bolstering weeks is blind will still bolster if the targets are in range. And if you're coming down from Volcal and doing the snaps with the swords, uh, your blind target is generally going to get bolstered. So this way we just eliminate uh, any of the sky screamers getting bolstered. If it wasn't a bolstering week, you'd just be doing this when you're coming down from Volcal and you would again just double sap your snore, uh, your snorids, your swords and your sky screamers on bolstering week though again, because there was three screechies left up. What we've done is we're going to pull these two. I'm going to cut them uh, back around and then we're going to pull the other screechy that we hadn't pulled over there. Remember that it's not actually chained to the pack, um, that I showed you in the start. And we're just going to do a triple, uh, sky screamer pull here. So, it's a, it's a nice little useful trick on bolstering weeks to be able to do something like that. Um, but otherwise, you'd just do it on the way back from Volcal. Dealing with Honor Guards, guys. So Honor Guards are generally the worst packs in a Tal Dazar. Um, and the new, well, not the new, the pretty much go is on Fortified as you're going to run down to the right and generally hero on this first pack here because the Honor Guards are so dangerous. Now, what you can do is use Shroud and generally you'd want to go to the second pack. We actually screw up. You want to go to the second pack, not this pack here. But if I control uh, Undead on the Honor Guard, I immediately take the Honor Guard out of this pack here. Now, we're grabbing the ones on the stairs and things like that, um, and I'll tell you why we shouldn't have grabbed the second pack and not this one in a second, but for the moment, you can see that the Honor Guard has been completely removed from this pack. Now, it's worth mentioning that the Shield Bearers, their Shield Bash will go on the closest melee target. So if you as the tank are running away, if you're kiting, just be aware that if someone else is closer in melee range than you, they're going to get slapped with that Shield Bash. Um, it's the same with the Frevalent uh, Fever Feverant. Feverant strikes um, on the honor guards on the other side on the first left pull and outside priestess that will also be the closest melee range and if you are fighting an honor guard if you're not controlling it their bleed debuff will also act like the way it does on the KR Zerkers it'll go on the closest melee target so just be aware of that as well but we're not fighting any honor guards now we're having uh, the rogue or a hunter or somebody run the trash off and we're going to go and get in the obelisk now the reason we should have shrouded and done the second pack with the controlled honor guard and fought here is because that way we all would have been able to go into the obelisk straight away. Now with my honor guard, while I'm in this realm, if I actually dismiss my honor guard, it returns to its original position and it doesn't aggro on it. Um, so it just completely removes itself from the situation and you don't have to worry about it. So you don't fight any honor guards for the entirety of the dungeon this way. Uh, it returns to its spot. It doesn't aggro on you, with you when you come out of the obelisk. It's a huge boost. Uh, so we're going to go into bosses now, guys. So I'm going to start off with uh, Rezan as the first boss. So with Rezan, there's probably a lot, uh, not a lot you don't know. With the terrifying uh, visage, you can actually use your AMS to avoid this fear and not have to run around in line of sight. 
Uh, so you can just stay in, build resources, and continue to damage Rezan. Another thing with his pursuit, uh, if you are a night elf yourself or if you've got night elves in the group, anyone shadow melding the pursuit will actually cancel it. It doesn't have to be the person that pursuit is on. Uh, if anyone in the group shadow melds it when pursuit comes up, it will cancel it. Worth noting though, it is worth sometimes delaying that pursuit cast by two to three seconds. What that will do is it'll allow you to not cop two bleeds from Razan in the same rotation, which can save you some CDs and a lot of stress in regards to how much damage that does. Moving on to Priestess Alunza, um, again, not a hell of a lot with this one. A nice little runic power gain you can actually get is when transfusion is going off, you can use your AMS. You'll build some runic power off this. You'll also avoid some of the damage coming out that your healer has to deal with. You can also play with your lingering psychic shell if you've got it equipped on this phase as well. It is also worth noting as well, if you do stuff up a pool uh, on Priestess Alunza, you can use your AMS to delay some of that cast. It generally won't go the full channel length, but it will obviously stop the boss from healing a lot if there's no blood pool. Uh, and the last thing, if you're a Blood Elf uh, Death Knight, when the Gold Claws goes off, you can and should dispel that with your racial as well. Uh, Vocal with Vocal. Again, another nice little runic tap boost is his Toxic Leap there. You can actually death advance uh, an AMS and just stand in it. It'll absorb your whole shield, but you'll get runic power from it if you're a little bit starved. Same with the Noxious. You can AMS just before that goes off, get a tick, and you can get some runic power from that one as well. The last boss, guys, Yasma. Now, this one is generally a fair sort of tank buster in the way of maneuvering it. Now, you'll always fight Yasma with uh, one of two of the obelisks. It'll either be the spider or the blob. Now, the spider just comes down to kick management, but is far easier on positioning-wise than uh, the blob is. And the reason being is the spider doesn't leave shit all over the floor. With Yasma, you pretty much want to make a square pattern around the encounter space and just keep flowing. Your entire group is going to be stacked on... Uh, pretty much you or on Yasma's ass or in front of Yasma. And every time the spider spawn, you pretty much want to be moving Yasma away and making a train line of spiders behind you. Now, another way you can do this is to try and leave all the spiders in the middle of the room. And you kind of, it involves a lot of movement and we'll see you kind of moving around the encounter space very quickly in order to try and keep the spiders trailing around in the middle. However, another way you can just do it is pretty much by pinning, uh, pinging corner to corner corner sort of in the room and just making sure that each time the spiders start to walk you're moving Yasma so the spiders trail in behind her your group continually moves forward with you and you just make a nice little train so uh, this is early stages of the fight so there's not a hell of a lot of spiders but you can see that they're starting to kind of trail in behind Yasma and we're just going to form a nice little train now I skip to a little bit later uh, in the fight in a second, just so I can sort of show you what I mean. So you can see here, we are up the back on the stairs now. There's about to be another spider spawn and you can see they're all kind of in a nice little clumping train. And I'm just gonna continue to move her around the encounter space like this for the remainder of the fight. Now with the blob, now this footage is courtesy of Vera and in 27 Atel Dazar. Um, they did this with the blob because it was last week. The blob was on rotation. Now, not only does the blob whack the tank a hell of a lot harder, but you've got these purple puddles to contend with. Now, the big thing with kiting uh, Yasma and the spiders and the blob around the room is that you don't want to cut your own group off with the purple puddles. So you can see Vayra has left a nice little line on the outside of the encounter space for his group to actually be able to run through those lines. So with the spider, you can kind of go to the edges and you can make the most of the encounter space with the blob however you need to make sure that the purple pools are going to leave uh, room enough for your group to be able to run through and again you can see every time the spiders are spawning Vayra is just making sure he's forming sort of a nice line uh, with the spiders and Yasma and just moving Yasma to continue to make the uh, spiders sort of form into a nice little train line and his group is just continually stacking in with him so the blob certainly makes Yasma a lot hairier in regards to moving around, but every time the spiders are up, just make sure you're moving Yasma, making the most of that encounter space and trying to form that train line of spiders. Uh, so that's it, guys. Hopefully I've covered everything off. Uh, Ataldazar was actually huge in regards to detail, so hopefully this format made it quite easy to understand what was going on and where I was talking about. If you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much for checking out the guide. Come find me on Twitch. Come say hi in Discord. I'll see you all next time. See you, fam.